hello welcome to my channel today i'm going to be doing on the advice that i wish i knew before applying to medicine this is just the video that i wish i saw last year when i was applying when i was thinking of applying and just thinking what am i getting myself into So really excitingly, this video is a collab with Chris Biel and he is a year 12 applying this year. So he's making a video on how he's feeling about applying, his tips for applying as he's going through it. Mine's kind of like the retrospective aspect and his is the current video. So definitely check out his video. So I've made a long list of all the things that I wish I knew because there's quite a lot. The first thing that I love to emphasize is research, okay? As a doctor, you will be researching, you will be investigating, diagnosing, you'll be looking for problems, you will be the problem solver. So it's a great time to start in your application process. And one thing that was said to me is that like they make the application process so difficult so that there's like lower amounts of people dropping out and stuff. So in my school for the first medical society meeting, the classroom is literally full. There was like over a hundred people that signed up. And by the end of the year, the people that actually applied was like a fraction of that. So it just shows how it's really difficult. Like there's so many other careers than medicine that can get you more money, a better work-life balance, are easier, are less straining on your family life. Like medicine is not easy. Like it is not easy. And there's so many other careers that, you know, you should look into because it's like, this is your life's calling. Like it's it's serious it is so serious I would really 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 recommend immersing yourself as much as possible into realistic medicine and you know it's all well and good thinking oh yes as I was a child I always wanted to be a doctor because you know they've got the white coat they've got the scrubs they're sewing up people they're like you know intercepting the problems and saving people's lives CPR and everything like they're just like the saviors but in reality it's going to be very very difficult being honest with you like physician suicide etc like it is so intense and i feel like being so young you really need to think about the negatives as well as the positives and just really evaluate if this is what you want for the rest of your life you know because once you're in you're in you know i feel like it's really important to kind of personalize why you want to study medicine and just have that like as your driving goal from all the things i've said before i've just kind of emphasized how you know you kind of need to have that drive, that inner motivation, not anyone else telling you, not anything else it needs to be intrinsic motivation. So when you're going through the application process, you need to be patient and calm and level-headed and just understand that whatever happens will happen. And that's just that, like, you need to have the motivation, like, people have applied five times and got in at that last time. And people have spent thousands and thousands of pounds just to do graduate entry medicine so it is such an intense situation and it's a privilege to be able to even study medicine and to be a doctor and you really shouldn't underestimate that because this is just like you're literally saving people's lives like come on clap clap to that now moving on to more practical things that you can do and have in your mind as you're applying right now is to Focus on your grades and your predictions. Medical schools will literally like order people from their UCATs, BMAT, and it's just like, you need to kind of be aiming high. Your mock exams, literally take them so seriously. It was really sad like after mock exams because everyone just like deeped that like, at the end of the day, the mock exams are kind of like even more important than the actual exams because they're what they see when you apply and it's just really pee. Try and do as well as possible in your mocks. That will kind of give you the confidence to go through the application process, knowing that you're not held back, that you're the best of the best, you know, try and aim high as possible. If you feel like you want to apply to BMAT University, definitely take the BMAT, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't really worry about the BMAT, but if you want to, you know, it's a good experience, and especially if your UCAT score isn't what you want, feel free to take the BMAT and have that as another option. So when looking into university courses, um, I had heard that PBL was like really bad because it's like, you're kind of relying on your group. But as of recently, I've really learned that PBL is 
so widespread because it's more of a modern approach and it's like it's kind of good because it forces you to be the like the one that leads your own education in university that's kind of how things work i've heard a lot of people complaining that lectures aren't really as engaging as you would hope and i can really understand that because <laughs> for biology we had a school trip where we went to this like lecture hall and there was like a garden and stuff and we literally had like a full day of lectures and let me just say half of the class was like asleep and <laughs> it's like when you're learning in different ways it's just like really good for you to have like oh i learned that while in a group i learned that in a conversation i learned that while researching and then presenting and it's just like it's really good to have all of those different kinds of structures so don't be afraid of pbl cbl case-based learning problem-based learning integrated learning as well as lectures so it all just works together to make you a good doctor that's well-rounded your learning is well-rounded so don't automatically put off um, PBL courses because that was something I saw a lot on the student room so one thing I've really noticed is as a doctor you will be the leader of the team and you know there'll be nurses and therapists and so many other people that are in your team and it's like you're the one coordinating it all so it's really important to have you know leadership teamwork etc so I'd recommend that you try to get LinkedIn and Instagram where you follow um, medics and people like that go to like insight days or go to online webinars and just try to really engage yourself in realistic content I follow loads of accounts that are like surgery or anatomy and like cadavers and stuff so you get to really see what you'll be seeing when you're in medical school and it's more normalized to you so Literally, I've learned so many things from just being on my Instagram feed and I really recommend, you know, just making a spare account so you don't end up following those people. But literally, it's so good to just immerse yourself in it and just see realistic role models and follow people. And like LinkedIn is so good for talking with actual doctors and you can interview them. And I've heard so many good things. So just really try to engage, make some connections, networking and all of that. Even though medicine is a very, very interpersonal, communicative career, medical students tend to be very competitive because of the nature of rankings and etc, etc. I find, especially in like med socks in your school and online on the student room, other applicants can really do their best to try to scare you or make you feel bad about your stats or whatever. But just know that, you know, they're overcompensating because they don't really know what's going on. Everyone is scared. Everyone is not knowing what's going on. Like people be like, oh, I have 10,000 A stars and like a 900 UCAT. And it's like, will I get an interview? Everyone is just trying to psych each other out and it's just really not it. So honestly, if you don't want to engage with that, like don't. And just know that at the end of the day, everyone's going to be a doctor in the end. And, you know, the career progression is just... It's a really long time, so there's not really much to worry in that sense. On the other hand, it would be really helpful. If your school doesn't have a med sock, definitely start one. In my school, um, I started a K-pop society, you know, that's where my priorities were. But um, I was also part of the medicine society. And it's just good to like practice with each other and like relate, You're like, oh, I found that interview really hard. And oh, how are you, how's your email press? or whatever and you can just kind of relate in that way because all of your other friends like some of my friends wrote their personal statement in like a day and literally just sent it and then they got in for other courses the application process is not like a problem at all but for medicine it's literally so draining and you know so it's good to have people to talk to and to relate to and also you know you can find those online if you don't have many people in your school i think it's really important to help others you know because again as doctors you're meant to be really kind compassionate people you know not withhold resources and things like that and you know just there's enough to go around you know one of the major things that made me even want to film this video is that with medical school the university that you go to does not matter at all and in fact it can be a deterrent for say law or like art history or english or business it's like obviously you'd want to be a, a top ranking university and it's like really classist and bad how literally they'll ignore like what grade you got and they'll just want that university like oxford and cambridge like they want people from those institutions for 
all of those subjects because it's more about the networking and all of that. It's, it's kind of a different situation. But with medicine, a while ago, I was quite surprised to find out that medical league tables are literally so irrelevant. If you want to look at certain aspects of the league table, they can be helpful. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you go because everyone is equal. And how it works when you apply for your foundation jobs is that you do a test which is 50% of your mark, uh, which is like the situational judgment test and you know you find out more about that later. You get points if you've done a longer course, if you have another degree like you know an intercalated year or like if you're graduate entry you'll get grades. It's like if you have a PhD you'll get more points and stuff so it's all like adding together. For when you're applying they don't see your medical school they only see your decile. So say there's like 600 people in your university. Throughout all of your years of medical school, you get like fifth decile, like you were like 50th percent highest or whatever. So that would be your decile and that's just that. Like it doesn't matter if you're Oxford or Cambridge or London or Edinburgh, like they don't care what university you went to. It's only what rank you're in. Obviously there's gonna be people that are like PhD students that are like, you know, so intelligent and you know they're going to be the ones in the higher in the higher decile so say you went to a, like a smaller university and then your first decile so it's like it kind of works out if anything it'd be better for you to go to a worse university to a lower ranked university and then get a higher decile once you apply for your foundation jobs you actually get your preference when i was thinking about what to apply in like year nine or whatever i was thinking of geography and obviously then it's like for the rates of unemployment for geography is like quite high you know so it's like you need to go to a high ranking university so that you stand out more and that you know it, they want that prestige they want that reputability um and with law i think it's like really bad how it's like if you've gone to a like average university you're less wanted by all the other firms in those situations you need to network to actually get your job or your internships so if you go to a worse university, you'd literally be disadvantaged because you wouldn't have the same opportunities. But with medicine, literally, it doesn't matter. And you can even intercalate at different universities if you really want to. And at the end of the day, when you're a doctor, no one is going to say, oh, they're a surgeon, but what university do they go to? Like, no, you'll be respected as much as you would from any other university. I'd recommend doing an EPQ, you know, even though doing it was like a fuss but literally in university you'll be writing essays i suppose you'll be especially if you do an intercalated degree you'll be writing essays you'll be doing research you'll be hopefully writing journals and articles and getting published so i definitely say a epq is a great opportunity to start doing that and i think i should do a video on epqs because mine is great and i can't wait to see what i get because i feel like I, I literally did amazing in that so I did a dissertation and it was about medical research ethics and honestly I went to talks for it I went to lectures for it and it just gives you an insight into university and how you know Google Scholar and writing and just referencing and everything so I definitely say look into an EPQ if you're applying to medicine. Medicine can feel so like elitist you know like there's those people that like oh my great grandfather and my dad and my mother are all doctors and then they've got my uncle to write my personal statement and then this 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 and it's like you know some of us don't have all those connections so hopefully this has been insightful to help anyone that doesn't know what is going on <laughs> so that has been my video on all of my tips to apply to medicine and what i wish i'd known before i applied so I hope it's been useful and I've made some more videos about medicine so please check out my channel, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! -bye.